This is TVS. With the time coming up to five minutes past one, we hand you over to Night Network. Very relaxing. So <laughs> ready. I feel so good. Tell me about it. This is some sort of game. I'll play along. Hi, Penelope. Hey, even the crew's <laughs> falling asleep. Wake up at the back there. It's still early. Do it! Welcome to a rather sad night network. Yes. Tonight, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we have our final episode of Captain Scarlet. Yep, it's farewell to Spectrum. And hello to civilian life, stardom, and those easy TV bucks. Actually, also appearing on the show tonight, we've got Nicholas Parsons with Alphabets. Yes, win a million. You'll be lucky. We'll also be going live in LA. Yes, and out there on a choppy North Sea tonight, we have Nick Tim Westwood on Ensign Radio. For some rip roaring rap. Hey, you're hot, man. Also, we've got the Scratch Professor on the show tonight. Only 14 and top of the mixing class. <laughs> wow. Right, don't forget tonight, keep your eyes peeled for our Night Network logo here because. During Captain Scarlet, you'll see this. More news later on. And the boys from OMD will be joining us for a very live chart attack. Plus, Nancy Griffiths will be strutting her country stuff. Get down in Studio 5 and chatting with me. You guys are so wooden. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I now declare this supermarket show well and truly open.
The new Peugeot 405 takes your breath away. Hi. I just moved in next door. Could I borrow a Diet Pepsi? Sure. Yes! Be right with you! When you go all out for taste, go for the only Diet Cola with 100% NutraSweet and no saccharin. You okay in there? Here's your Diet Pepsi. Thanks. I hope it wasn't too much trouble. No trouble at all. Diet Pepsi, the only Diet Cola with no saccharin. Nancy Griffiths of Austin, Texas, now residing in Nashville, Tennessee. Earlier on, you told me that you're not country and western. You're something called. Well, I call what I do folkabilly because it's you take a combination of you take a little bit of folk and Woody Guthrie on one side and a whole lot of Loretta Lynn on the other side. A lot of Loretta Lynn. A little <laughs> bit of Texas and you mix it up and you come out with Nancy Griffiths. So. so, where do you find all your inspiration? Is it in Nashville? Is that the heart of sort of country and folk music for you? Um, well, it's really the heart, I think, of. of of music as songwriters. It's a real mecca of songwriters as well as Austin, Texas. Both places are very well known for, for you know, the writing of the music. And what sort of stuff inspires you to write your songs? You've been called the lady who's in love with love. Um, I think um, middle Americana really inspires me. I'm, I'm very infatuated with, with um, normal people. Um, mm. Just everyday life. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how do you think your music's being received over here in Europe? Wonderful. Ireland has been, we just finished a three week tour of Ireland and that was incredible. Yeah. And uh, played here in London for three nights and, and was was wonderful. So You've I'm got really some more dates it. in London, haven't you? Coming up. We'll be back in April um, through May and mm -hmm. uh, we'll be playing here in London and all over the UK and back in Ireland and then going straight on to Holland and, Holland. and other places. Yeah. So um, what sort of, when, when are we going to see some stuff on vinyl? Um, the song that I just sang, Cold Hearts, Closed Minds, mm -hmm. is from my Lone Star State of Mind album. Right. And that's, that's been out now for about a year. Yeah. And uh, the new album that I have coming out, uh, it's called Little Love Affairs, and it Great. comes out in March. Okay, now see if you could introduce the next number. It's a bit more then. Thanks uh, very much. Thank you. This is a song from my new album, Little Love Affairs, and uh, it's a, um, a song called I Wish It Would Rain. Oh, I wish it would rain I wash my face clean I'm gonna find some dark cloud That in me Oh, love and a memory Sparkles like diamonds When the diamonds fall They burn like tears When the diamonds fall They burn like backbone to buildings, for example. How would you get at oil without steel? And most of the things that aren't made of steel are still made with it. Maybe life without steel wouldn't be funny at all. Just as well British steel's so healthy. British steel in shape for things to come. I've got a gum, it's reekly spearmint gum For me it's the Jew, it's my number one It's so minty cool, minty through and through it It tastes so great, you'll just love to chew it Reekly spearmint, reekly spearmint gum Cool fresh taste, share it with someone It's so minty cool, minty through and through it Tastes so great, you just love to chew it Tastes so great, you just love to chew it John Wilson, carpenter. Stuart Blackman, biochemist. 
Terry Smythe, telephone engineer. They're in the Territorial Army in their spare time, a third of Britain's land forces trained to fight alongside the regulars. And we're looking for more recruits. Make a free call on 0800 treble 5 treble 5 now. We're ready and waiting to talk to you. Paul's special vapor action unblocks your nose, soothes your throat, helps you through your day. Paul's Mentholiptus, vapor action for your nose and throat. Exchange and bar. It gives you more clout. Welcome to Chart Attack. This week we're looking at the UK albums. And uh, our special guests this week are a band who are about to launch their eighth album upon us. It's Andy and Paul from OMD. Good morning, lads. Hello, hello. Hi. Are you okay? Yeah, well, yes. I'm just fighting off the flu at the moment. Oh, really? Yeah, we'll yeah. stay this side of it. <laughs> That's all right. Then. I won't breathe too much. So, so the new LP is going to be a kind of greatest hits, yeah? Yes, 14 just contemporary classics, you know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but you've had 21 singles now, which is quite incredible, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean... I know, we don't look a day over 53, do we? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And when, when will the album be out, then, The Greatest Hits? When uh, at the end it? of this month, it'll be right out. Right at the end, the, uh, the 31st of February. All right. And what else are you up to? You didn't <laughs> <say that>. <laughs> <laughs> the 31st of February? As if, as if I didn't. <laughs> what, what, what else is happening? Touring or, you know, uh, getting around? Well, we, we normally do a lot of touring. I mean, we've toured the world now for, you know, the last sort of... Well, God knows how long. Yeah. Oh. A lot of years. OK, and, well, uh, hang on. Before you go on, sure. I want to get. I want to play some album tracks, right? First of all, into the top 20 we go. We're doing that very soon. But first, it's a new entry at 22. It's Simon Climby and Rob Fisher with the long player, Everything. Here's the current hip-hop version of the... Now, where were we? On tour. We we're talking about touring, yes. Right. Yeah, I um, think... I, I don't think we're going to be touring till sort of spring or summer this year. Mm-hmm. We've got lots of these groovy TV shows to do instead, you see. 
Which is just as much, just much, as much fun. fun, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You were talking about that record, actually. You were saying that, that it took a while for you to grow that Climbing Fisher record. Yeah, actually, the first time I saw them doing it was on TV, and I thought it was last, I have to be perfectly honest. But uh, actually, particularly this version. The hip -hop. I really like this version, the, just that walking bass line. Mm -hmm. It just, and the vocal just glides over the top of it. All right, Very then. Tasty. Let's get uh, going again. At 20, the cream of Eric Clapton. 19, it's Faith, George Michael. And at 18, in this week's UK Albums Chart, it's John Jellybean Benitez. He's expected in the UK this very weekend. Here he is with some help from Stephen Dante. Here's the real thing. Been just visiting this planet. That's at 18. 17, we have Rain Dancing from Alison Moye. 16, the Pet Shop Boys, actually. At 15, it's Dusty Springfield, the Silver Collection. And 14, Heaven on Earth from Belinda Carlisle. 13, Tango in the Night, that's Fleetwood Mac. At 12, Coming to My Life, Joyce Sims. And a brand new entry at 11 this week, it's Skyscraper from David Lee Roth. Do you actually go out buying records or do you manage to get a few freebies? Well, you never get any free ones off Virgin, you know, so <laughs> I have to go and buy them. But, uh, no, I've just, I've just been, I've just, without sounding too cosmopolitan, just been buying records in New York, wow. actually, you know. What kind? What you been buying? Uh, mostly a lot of the hip hop stuff mm -hmm. and. Uh, I haven't listened to any of them yet. I've got about stack this big sat at home and I haven't got, they'll be out of date by the time I get home. All right, we'll settle down after the show tonight because we have Tim Westwood on. He's the king of rap, so you can catch up on some of the new ones. At 10 this week, remember what day it is Sunday. Here's to Powell with a reminder at number 10 from the album Bridge of Spires. Here it is at number 10 on the UK albums. <laughs> Oh, 
number 10 this week and Bridge of Spires. At nine, he's still in there, old wacko and bad. Now, at number eight this week, it's Michael Hutchins and the lads from In Excess. Now, they have a high climber this week with Kick, which reminds me that we have three In Excess videos for our competition winners. Now, is one of those for you? Well, you can find out in just a couple of ticks right here on Night Network. <laughs> Dreams are like angels, they keep bad at bay, bad at bay. Love is the light, scaring darkness away. Yeah. I'm so in love with you, purge the soul. Make love your Together, you're safer with your ex. Beautiful hair, enhanced with body and shine. You need a conditioner that responds to your individual needs. Silky and self-adjusting conditioner acts only where needed. What's not needed, rinse is clean away. Silkian's conditioner and shampoo. For beautiful hair, turn to Silkian's. To Chart Attack, Andy and Paul here from OMD. Uh, this time next week, by the way, we'll be looking at the indie chart, so that's next Friday night. Last week, then, we asked you to name Michael Hutchins' make of motorbike from Inix. So uh, the answer is. Uh, a cheap Harley Davidson. <laughs> yes, very cheap, I think. <laughs> and we have three winners here who will each receive one of these fab videos. So, uh, I'll start off, shall I? Yes. First one, the winner is John Maloney. We did this draw earlier, by the way. John Maloney from Peckham, down there in SE15. He correctly said Harley Davidson. Who's Mick's brother? And uh, Mick's sister, Emma Griffin from <laughs> Eastleigh and Hans. She's another winner. Well done. And? And uh, we have an aunt here who's also <laughs> one. Uh, Michelle Rowlinson of Ashford in Kent. Well done. I'll take them all home later on. <laughs> right, let's see In Excess in album action then. At number eight, here it is, the LP's called Kick New Sensation In Excess.
Michael Hutchins there in excess. Different hairstyle there to last week. He's got a little slick back there. Uh, at number seven, it's Jack Mix 8688 from Mirage. And at six, If I Should Fail from the Pogues. At five, popped in, sold out, wet, wet, wet. Turning back the clock, it's Johnny H. Jazz at number four. Well, you, you said you were on the same bill as uh, in excess. Well, yeah, it was a few years ago now, and uh, I must admit, I was disappointed in them live because I thought they were too much like a rock band. Because the, the records and the singles are so clever, the rhythm mm -hmm. tracks are just amazing. I mean, and I haven't seen them live for a while, so maybe they've changed. Because right. uh, I think it's, it's been said before, uh, one American magazine voted them the best live band in the world. So not Bruce mm -hmm. Springsteen. Well, you two have to say about that. About that. Yeah. 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 But any other bands you've seen recently that? Uh, uh, Worth a mention. James Last, great gig. Rocking in the aisles. What can I say? James <laughs> yeah. Last is one who's not on this chart, really. Heat Car. That is ACDC at number three. And at two this week, The Christians and The Christians. And I know you bought that LP. I did, actually. You've got to support, you know, Liverpool bands, really. It's very, excellent. very healthy at the moment, isn't it? I've been uh, in Liverpool, the situation yeah. groups. Yeah, I mean, it always seems to be the case, you know. There always there always seems to be bands constantly coming out of Liverpool. That's what we were saying to you earlier when the cameras weren't rolling. 70% of the best bands in the world come from Liverpool. Only 70%? Uh, yeah, well, the other 30% <laughs> are you too, so I mean... There's a, <laughs> a new band which uh, is new to me. We're going to try and feature them tomorrow night on Video Review. They're called Empire. Yeah. Yeah. They're from Liverpool as well. What do you know about those... Uh, we saw them fairly recently, actually, not live, but we saw them. Uh, we did um, um, a, a radio thing with them recently. They're really yeah. nice guys. All Another right. duo from Liverpool. Can All they go right? right? We'll check that one out tomorrow night on Video View. At number one, 29 weeks on the LP chart, BPI's Best International Newcomer Award winner. It's Terence Trent Derby from the Hardline. His Wishing Well, number one album. And uh, right, good luck with the LP in April. No, two weeks' time, end of this month. End of this month, all right. Thanks yeah. a lot for coming in. You're back up to Liverpool now? Sunny Liverpool, yes. Tomorrow yeah. morning on that first train. Thank Cheers. you very much. Right, next week, as I said earlier, we got the indie chart, but still to come tonight, we have alphabets, we have more Captain Scarlet, and keep your eyes peeled during Captain Scarlet for our Night Network logo because there will be prizes and questions a bit later on. We have Rap on the Cold North Sea with Tim Westwood on Ensign Radio. I'll see you tomorrow night for Video View. Keep watching, y'all. See you later. There's a pain reliever available with our prescription that has two pain-killing ingredients, paracetamol and codeine. It's called Solpadine, delivering relief in an effervescent formula to get to work fast. So now, when pain strikes, hit back with double-action Solpadine. Effervescent and now in capsule form, Solpadine has the power to hit pain where it hurts. Hi there, I'd like to introduce more ways to eat your Cadbury's cream eggs. Here's Lone Ranger on silver. Whoa, -ho -ho, take it steady, Nitty. On Tom Tums, Abraham Lincoln. Wham, bam, thank you, Abraham. Julius Caesar on saxophone. He's a taste bud, please, of that. Ooh. Caesar Caesar. Hey. Bonnie Prince Charlie doing the yokey cokey. Off of its plum jock, Cadbury's cream eggs. How do you eat yours? Shoulders. I didn't know you had dandruff. Shh. I don't. Head and shoulders. I didn't know you had dandruff. I don't. Tests prove it. With ordinary medicated shampoo, dandruff can still be there. But with head and shoulders used regularly, it's completely clear. Head and shoulders. I didn't know you had dandruff. I don't. So don't have dandruff. Have great looking hair. Very relaxing. When all is ready, I throw so good. Tell me about it. This is some sort of game. I'll play along. Hi, Penelope. Hey. <laughs> <laughs>
Even the crew's falling asleep. Wake up at the back there. It's still early. <laughs> steel. And most of the things that aren't made of steel are still made with it. Maybe life without steel wouldn't be funny at all. Just as well British steel's so healthy. British steel in shape for things to come. with body and shine, you need a conditioner that responds to your individual needs. Silkian self-adjusting conditioner acts only where needed. What's not needed rinses clean away. Silkian's conditioner and shampoo. For beautiful hair, turn to Silkian's. More cocoa, sir. Iceberg! <laughs> Stop all engines. Gun. 
30 degrees starboard. You'll be glad you had an extra strong mint. Center of Britain. Welcome to the greatest game in the history of the universe. It's the all-new Alphabet Show. Let's meet that host with the most, the living legend, the hottest, the latest, the greatest. It's Nicholas Parsons. Yes, hello, hello, and welcome to Alphabets, our game of trivial joy and pleasure, devised entirely to keep you awake through those trivial and undemanding hours of the early morning. And once again, I have four exciting and wide awake and utterly irreverent guests who are going to pit their knowledge, their wit, and all their insomnambulant charm before this, I don't know what it means, it's a lovely word, before this vast and exciting audience here. Yes, they've all come in, as usual, on the same tape. And now let me introduce you to our four guests. Well, first of all, someone from the pop world, someone who's one of our most extrovert members of the pop world, from King Kurt himself, it is Rory. Rory. Hello, hello, hello. Is that your dressing gown you're wearing? It's my mother. It's your mother. It's your mother. Oh well, thank goodness me. Back to the womb. You were you, oh, you were suckled by a wolf, were you? Right. And uh, they work in teams, of course. And his team with a lovely girl who is guaranteed to keep us wide awake because that is what she does in the wide awake club for all the little toddlers. And it is Michaela Strachan. <laughs> in order to keep Michaela completely wide awake and feel at home, I'm sure all of us in the studio will want to say to her. We're, we're wide awake. And, of course, all of you will stay wide awake and watch her in the kiddie show in the later on this morning. Now, the opposition team, well, we welcome back a guest who has been with us with great success in the past, a man who shows that there is an alternative to alternative comedy, and that is to be funny. In fact, all comedy should be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Except when you get a prop. We've had those, we've had that prop since this show started, and the flowers have not withered until you came in the studio. Arthur Smith! He has peaked already. We've had the best of Arthur. That was his best gag, playing with a jar of, 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 of flowers. Uh, vase, vase, or vase of flowers. Right, and we have a lovely guest with him as his partner, someone from EastEnders who's... Why are you calling all the women lovely? And why don't you call the men lovely, Nicholas? Because I don't want you to come forward with that own response to that. Uh, I'm a bit nervous of you, Arthur. Right. <laughs> because beside him is from EastEnders, it is Judy, but better known to us as, as Joanna Bright. Really? And uh, just to remind you, I have all the letters of the alphabet in front of me. Behind every letter there's a question. It has a value in points, but that is not necessarily the standard of the question. They can take it, they can pass. If they gamble and pass, well, of course, then the question becomes worth twice as many points. That's how they win or lose. And, of course, later on there will be the 45-second challenge. More of that when it happens. Let us begin the contest, such as it is this week, with Rory and Michaela. Which letter of the alphabet would you like to take for starters? Think positive. Think um, positive. J. H I J. Twenty five points. Jackson. Michael Jackson. And there is a video with this oh, one. No. So we have a video here of Michael Jackson. It is bad. And while that video is on. Who's bad and he's good. And do you want to take a question on Michael Jackson? Yes. Well, best international artist in this year's record industry awards, of course. But what Hi, I'm Michael. is the name of Michael's pet chimpanzee? Oh, no, I know, oh, I know. No. You know it? No. Um, um nose job. No? <laughs> no, nose job, no, 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 no. nose job, no. I don't no, know. come um, on, Rory. Oh, no. You're no. the music person, come on. Yeah, but that's hardly it's a musical monkey. question, it's isn't it? That's where we have the fun. A, um, a lovely trivia Mike. music question, yes. Mickey. Bubbles. Oh. Oh. So they've lost 25, they've gone Shucks. down to 75. Oh. So without having actually opened your mouth yet on a question, Arthur, you're now in the lead. 
and uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll, Joanna. Uh, Which we'll letter have, would, letter we'll would have, you... We're in the lead, so we'll have that one next to J. Yeah. Next to um, J, K, no, I. 25 that's points. Wrong. Iceland. Oh, yes, dynamite. <laughs> dynamite. My favourite. Your favourite. Magnus Magnusson. <laughs> that's right, yes. You aspire to him, don't you, Nicholas? I aspire to him. Don't be disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Magnus and I are just good friends. <laughs> <laughs> Now, listen, do you want to take a question on Iceland? Yes, we've established that. Get you on. have established. I thought you were establishing my relationship with Magnus Magnusson. Uh, right, the question on Iceland is, Sorry. what is the principal export from that country? Easy. Ice. Easy? No, Obviously, they don't export ice easy. chess, ice, uh, Icelanders, fur, Afghans, uh, tea. If you were to use that brain which you used on your other question when you said that Magnus Magnusson came from Iceland, you'd know it must be fish. Because they go oh, fishing and all that North Sea matter <laughs> um, oh, no, we had with our Hispanic fishermen. Oh, so they've lost it on the equal pegging, 75 points each. Right, Rocky, uh, Rory. Rocky, <laughs> Rocky. Rocky. <laughs> Rory right, and Michaela. Me, well, we've got to go for a 15, haven't we? Oh, no, 20. Um, 20. There's a 20. Where do you want to go to the 20? Yes, yeah. this is 20. People, right. people yeah. Parsons, but on this occasion it's the Pet Shop Boys, and we oh, have a video. video here. What have I done to deserve this? That's the Pet Shop Boys video. It's not me. I mean, everybody knows what I've done to deserve it. Come on, Nigel, hurry up. Yes, it's a very good video of the Pet Shop Boys. What have I done to deserve this? I, I might ask you again. Yes, Neil and Chris, BPVI's best uh, group um, award winners this year, this week, sorry, this year and this week, of course. It was, well, we yes. think it's why are they called Pet Shop Boys, but we're not going to tell you. Uh, now you have to decide whether you're going to take a question on the Pet Shop Boys. I haven't asked you yet. Yes. Yes, you are. So the question is, Neil and Chris, pelt a carry-on star with food in a new film. What is the name of that carry-on star? Oh, God. It's Sid, well, it's not Fenella Fielding. Sid, it's not Sid dead. Sid's dead. No. Um, and it's, um, the other one's dead. Is it, is it, what's the girl with the, with the, um, chest? Barbara Windsor. Barbara Windsor. Barbara Windsor's a good guess, and you've got it right, yes. Yeah. You've got 25 points. So they deduced yeah. that one. What, yeah. what, what demanding yeah. trivia all this is. Yeah. Right, um, <laughs> Arthur. He's changed the name to Artie. Do you want to be called Artie or Arthur? I want to be called Sir Alastair Burnett. Right. <laughs> Go on, you choose, Joanna. Um, Joanna and Sir Alistair, can we which have mm. tea, please? Tea, right. Yes. Uh, do you want a cup of or the letter T? You do that Both, joke every actually, week. Actually, yes. No, I haven't. <laughs> Still <laughs> never got a laugh. I haven't, I haven't <laughs> done it before, actually. No, I did, I did it with coffee last week. Right, Elizabeth Taylor, do you want a question? Yes, on... yes, yes. You yeah. do? Yes, yes, yes. Can you tell me who is the older, Elizabeth Taylor or Joan Collins? Yeah, you should know this, Joanna. It's nothing to do with Iceland, is it, this one? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's a fishy question, I think actually. Elizabeth Taylor. You have got it right, yes. Oh, well done. She is one Elizabeth year Elizabeth older, yes. Fish. Elizabeth oh, Taylor is 26 and Joan Collins is 25. I thought Ooh. so. How old According are you, Nicholas? Me, I'm 24. <laughs> I'm trying to be one of one of their, um, uh, you know, what do they call them? Pet shop boys. The, uh, you know, um, you know, tour boys. Thank you. Thank you. We do have a live audience at last. <laughs> My goodness, Rory and um, Michaela, which letter of the alphabet do you um, want? It's got to be a 15, hasn't it? This time. There's no 20s e, left. E. E. e? You want E? Yeah. Right. Fine. Edward, Prince Edward. Do you want a question on Prince? Oh yes. Ed Why? I know Prince it's your Edward girlfriend. Gets sacked from the Marines. That is not the question. Oh, no, no. Like, what's his new girlfriend? That could be it. Um, right, you're going to go for it, are yeah. you? Right. I think you've made a mistake here. I think this is a real toughie. I really do. Terribly interesting, too. When he marries, Prince Edward will inherit a title and become Duke of which English county? Um, <laughs> is anyone Duke of York at the moment? Yeah. Yes, oh, is. That's the one. Well, Michaela, yes, we I'm glad enough. you informed the kids so Brilliant. well, you know, the White Way Club. <laughs> Um, That's the um, ideal place. He's been on the Wide Awake Club as Duke well. Of, yes. Duke Old Eddie. Mm. Duke, um, Duke, Duke of Marlborough. There's a number of the 26 English counties you could choose from, other than Duke York, because you know it's Wellington. not that one. There's no, no county called Wellington. <laughs> come on, the Duke of Wellington. No, where's the... Right, come on! Duke of... Duke, Duke of Wellington. Lancaster. Lancaster. No, no. What do you know? Do you know the answer? Oh, Bogner. 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 Duke of Bogner. That's not a county. <laughs> but Bogner is in Sussex, and it is actually the Duke of Sussex. Yeah, Bogner. See, I've got, yeah. Really, yeah. I've got the right place. I think you're getting, you're bringing wow. the whole tone down. You're getting Arthur's influence there. Right, <laughs> Bogner. Right, 45 second challenge for Rory and Michaela to try and pick up. You are on 80 points. You're trading 15 points behind the leaders. And all the letters this week, all the questions this week, are under the letter H. Come on, Michael. Right, five we points for everyone you get right. You cannot lose any points. Guess or pass if you don't know is my advice, and the time starts. Now, H. Henry, Lenny Henry, true or false, he started his career on new faces? True. 
True is right. Horse racing, where does the derby run? Epsom. Right. Hexagon, how many sides does a hexagon have? Six. Six is right. Keep quiet, Michaela. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty, who couldn't put him back together again? All the king's horses and all the king's men. I thought the wider <laughs> club would know that one. Oh, Arthur, you're absolutely rotten. <laughs> so that, yes. Right, Holmes, in which state of home does the Queen Mother live? Clarence House. Clarence House is right, oh, Herbie. We're good. We're good. What was Herbie you in are? the film Herbie Rides Again? What was he on? Herbie. He's a car. A car. <laughs> box. Hey, box. what is box the hay one. made from? <laughs> Okay, he's made ten Grass. seconds left. Grass is right. Hill, Jimmy Hill, which professional team did he play football for? None. Fulham, Hawaii 5 -0. Who played the hero Steve McGarrett in this TV series? Steve McGarrett was played by Jack Henry Lord. Winkler. And how many points do they well, have? They got 35 points, so they have now gone up. Steve's got his calculus out, he's got a calculator out, and Steve's got it up to 115 with three cross-outs. Right. So, at the halfway mark in our contest... Rory and Michaela are on 115 points, and Arthur and Joanna are on 95. And during the break, I've got a little trivia to tease you with. Yes, use your brains on this one. Can you tell me how many words there are in the Oxford Dictionary? I will tell you after this. Hi. I just moved in next door. Could I borrow a Diet Pepsi? Sure. Yes! Be right with you! When you go all out for taste, go for the only Diet Cola with 100% Nutrisweet and no saccharin. You okay in there? Here's your Diet Pepsi. Thanks. I hope it wasn't too much trouble. No trouble at all. Diet Pepsi, the only Diet Cola with no saccharin. I've got a gum, it's reekly spearmint gum For me it's the Jew, it's my number one It's so minty cool, minty through and through it It tastes so great, you just love to chew it Reekly spearmint, reekly spearmint gum Cool fresh taste, share it with someone It's so minty cool, minty through and through it Tastes so great, you just love to chew it Tastes so great, you just love to chew it Shoulders. I didn't know you had dandruff. Shh. I don't. Head and shoulders. I didn't know you had dandruff. I don't. Tests prove it. With ordinary medicated shampoo, dandruff can still be there. But with head and shoulders used regularly, it's completely clear. Head and shoulders. I didn't know you had dandruff. I don't. So don't have dandruff. Have great looking hair. Hi there, I'd like to introduce more ways to eat your Cadbury's cream eggs. Here's Lone Ranger on silver. Whoa, -ho -ho, take it steady, Nettie. On Tom Tums, Abraham Lincoln. Wham, bam, thank you, Abraham. Julius Caesar on saxophone. He's a taste bud pleaser then. Caesar Geezer. Bonnie Prince Charlie doing the yokey cokey. Off of its bottle jock, Cadbury's cream eggs. How do you eat yours? Welcome back to Alphabets, the Oxford English Dictionary. Did you manage to count all the words in that dictionary during the break? Well, did you manage to write them all down? <laughs> 490,000. Thank you very much. <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? Yes, all things one knows. Yes. Actually, I'll tell you something else. It is assumed, or it is calculated, that only about 60,000 are in common usage. Mind you, I know some people only use about six of them. And two of them aren't actually, actually, well, two of them aren't actually in the dictionary. Well, not in the new one, anyway. Right, what is the score? 115 to Rory and Michaela. And uh, they're in the lead. And Arthur, who's picked up one of the curtains to put round him. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a holes in the shirt, so I would like to point out that Arthur has... Well, holes in the shirt. It's all rage, I tell you. Well, he's got his nightshirt on, ready to go to bed, you see. Right. So, Arthur, would you sit down, and you and Joanna, you turn to take a letter of the alphabet. Which no, is Joanna, I will ignore him, and you let me know. Which letter of the alphabet would you like? Yes, I think we should go for a big one, A, please. A big one, A, 15 points. Arthur and Joanna, Astley, Rick Astley, and there is a video with this. Right. Never gonna give you up. Yes, Rick Astley, of course, Brilliant. the best single of the year award and the BPI awards this year.
Yes, best single on the water year went to Rick Astley. But can you tell me, a year ago, what job was Rick doing? I know this one. But just a minute, I haven't asked you yet if you can take it or not. Yes, please. <laughs> All right. Well, tea boy, wasn't he? He was a tea, tea boy. Oh, yes, he was. was. Trolley, Joanna, the well trolley. done. He was a tea boy. Well done. Okay. Yes, I knew you knew it. 110 points. You're only five ahead. Rory and Michaela, which letter of the alphabet? N, N right, uh, P, Q, R, N, 15 N points. Norman. Newspapers. Do you wish to take a question on newspapers? Yes. Yeah. All right. Are you sure? It could be easy. could be tough. <laughs> All right. You're going for it, are you? We will go for it. Oh, uh, you don't. Or you go for the toughies, you see. Which was the first newspaper to publish a topless pin-up? Was it the Daily Star? Was it the Morning Star? Was it the Sun? Or was it the Times? I think it's probably the Morning Star because they don't do... They do, they no, do a no, Morning no, Star? it's a comic paper. No, they it's a comic paper. <laughs> comic, comic, not comic paper. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't have that. I wouldn't talk no, about no, that no, on no, the no. Wild Away Club, the Morning no, Star. No. The kids wouldn't know what you're talking about. The right. Star, star, Daily Star. The Star. The Daily Star. No, it wasn't. It oh. was, you might be surprised to hear, it was the Times. No! My favourite. Yes. Well, I'm never going to Yes. Oh, yes. In a, an advertisement. Oh, no. An advertisement. Like Jerry Scott. Sharkers before. And then the. Oh, June, don't. June, don't. <laughs> oh, my. Hey, what a shame. He's going to put in a bill for a new shirt to Night Network. Oh, my nipples are all erect now. So. <laughs> They've lost 15 points, they're down to 100. You're in the lead on 110 now. Arthur, Yay. the strip shirt Arthur and Joanna, what letter of the alphabet do you want? Um, uh, I think that we shirt. should have... S. Yes, S for shirt, that's good. S one, for yeah. shirt, 10 points. Yeah. Scarlet, Captain Scarlet. Do you want a question on Captain Scarlet? Mm, no, I'm, I'm crap on that. Yeah. Part, we'll pass it over. Pass yeah. now, you have a chance to catch up here. Oh. This is now worth 20 points. Right. Captain Scarlet's last appearance on Night Network tonight. Oh, oh alas. Hey, come back. Right. But can you tell me, what is Captain is Scarlet's real name in the TV series? Is it Dick Grayson, Perry White, or Paul Metcalf? Captain Scarlet's real name in that television series. Um, can you say them again? No, I do. Yes, Dick Grayson, Perry White, and Paul Metcalf. Paul Metcalf. Paul Metcalf. You're going for Paul Metcalf. You're quite sure Paul you don't Metcalf. change your mind. Good, because you've got 20 points. Yay! Right, so you're now on 120 and 110, and your turn to take a question, Rory and Michaela. Oh, we just have one. Oh, right, we just had one. one. Okay, yeah, quick, quick. Oh, no, we haven't. You you just, just, just no, we took it over. It was passed. Oh, it's so confusing. <laughs> it's not oh, really. We're bluffing actually, our way through this. Yeah. <laughs> we, we'll have to have a 10 now, won't we? Um, right, come on. It's got um, to be. It's the, the R. R. All oh, right, 10 points for our Russia. Do you want to take a question on Russia? Oh, not Russia. No, no. No, do you want to pass it then? And we had a question in Russia. Yeah, no, pass all right, it. pass yeah, it over. Yeah. Right. Russia. It's Russia. not worth Russia. 20 Russia. points. Russia. Can you tell me, Arthur and Joanna, they your chance grade. to catch up. Yes. How many kopecks are there in one rouble? How many kopecks? Uh, how many kopecks? Uh, it's not Sir Alistair Burnett again, I'm is it? I'm not sure. No, the no, word today was Holland, Magnus Magnuson might know the Holland? answer. Uh, kopecks and rouble. Uh, 20. You should have stuck with what you first came out with, 100. 100. You changed hundred. It. I said 100. I know, you changed it to 20. No, 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 you changed it to 100. No, no, it's a 20. Yeah, I'm sorry. You have to lose it. It was passed. Steve, 20. I'm sorry. They passed it. They're 20. Now they've gone down to 90. Right. And your turn to take a question. Uh, right, we'll take uh, uh, V. V, right. It's <laughs> Valentine's Day. How many Valentine cards are you going to get, do you think? Well, I won't get one from you, will I? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be getting one from Sir Magnus Magnuson. Obviously. Yes, yes. You know, he's, been, Magnus... he's been knighted by you as well, right? <laughs> this is a good question for Valentine's Day. Virgins. <laughs> do you want a question on virgins? No. no do you know anything about virginity, yeah. Joanna? Yes, I do, actually, yes. <laughs> Right, we'll have that. Yeah. Right, all right. Virgins. Is that what you are when with your boyfriend in EastEnders? Right. Yes. So, virgins. A question on virgins. It's a bit the other way. It's going to be about the virgins. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. You know, it doesn't yes. make a hand on me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fine. All right, Joanna. That's oh, why she ripped my gloves. shirt. He wears gloves. <laughs> this is not a very Another virginal one. show with half his shirt off, is it? <laughs> Can you tell me, Norman Island in the Virgin Islands uh. was supposedly the model for Treasure Island. Now, is that true or false? Um, Norman Island. Island. In the Virgin Islands. Norman Tebbit Island. Uh, no, no, and it wasn't Norman's Magnuson Island either. Norman Magnuson. Supposedly, no, I think we should model. consult on this one for a second. Well, it can't take too long. It's either well, true or we'll false. We'll just snog and then give the answer. No. Now, <laughs> oh, I forgot what the question is. True. Paul, true. True. You're going for true, are you? True. true. Right, you've got ten points. Yay! <laughs> forty-five second right. challenge, right. They are a hundred points, but you haven't had your forty-five second challenge now, Rory or Michaela. Mich yes, Rory! Yes, they have. It's out of ten. It's out of ten. I know, yeah, but Rory was looking over it. Sit down, there's a naked man. Put him away, someone. <laughs>
So you now have a chance to catch up. So you're 100 points to their 120. You have a 45 second challenge on the letter A. Five points for every correct answer. You cannot lose anything for wrong answers. Guess or pass if you don't Apple. know. And the first. Arsehole. <laughs> Quite late, you can say that. The wide awake club is all right. They won't be up. They'll be asleep. They'll be getting up for this Sunday. Right. I know. Listen, they'll be watching tonight. Listen, he's looking at the Nicholas and then he got all confused. Right. <laughs> 45 seconds on the letter A. Andrews Julie. She starred as Mari in which smash hit film? Uh, Sound of Music. Right. Arsenal Football Club. What is their home ground called? Um, um, Arsenal player, the Gunners player, Cannon. Uh, close, ah, close, ah, close. Arsenal. You told me you I'd knew pass, that. I'd pass, I'd pass. Pass, pass. pass. Highbury, Australia. Oh, what is their capital? Uh, Canberra. Right. Azure, what colour is it? Blue. Correct. Acetic acid is better known as what food L flavouring? Lemon juice. Vinegar. Awards. Well, Emmys are awarded in which branch of entertainment? Uh, Emmys. Which one? Emmys. Tele television. Television, yes. yes. Angles. How many degrees in a right angle? 90. Right, and 10 seconds left. Oh, quick, quick. Uh, aha. How many members are there in this three, poll? Three, 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 three. three. Aspel. Michael Aspel. What is the name of this TV chat show called? Aspel and Company. Right. Apple. Which group formed this label? Beatles. Beatles is right. You have another five for that, and you have a total of that of oh, 40 points. You beat them on the 45 second oh, challenge. You're now in the lead, 20 oh, points ahead on 120, oh, and right. it is your turn to take a question, Rory and Michaela. What is it going to be? Is any more 15s? No, it's 10. F, 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 which one? F, 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 F three. I'm sorry, 10 points. Jeans. Football. Now, do you want a question on football? It could be easy, it no, could be yeah. tough. No. You're going to yeah, pass it. But the question on football for you is worth 20 points if you get it right. right. Highbury, Highbury. No, <laughs> Highbury is right yet. But this one is, oh, this is a joy. Roy of the Rovers. Oh, Roy of right the Rovers. Football team. Which football Manchester team? Manchester Rovers. He got 20 points. Happy Morton. Yeah. Yeah. They've gone up to 160. It's your turn to take a question. What's it to be? M for mother. M for mother, yes. right. 10 <laughs> points. Mickey Mouse. Do you want to take the question yeah, on Mickey Mouse? Yeah, Mickey Mouse? Right, you do. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. What was the original name of Mickey Mouse? It was first his debut film in 1937 was Magnus he called Merry Mouse then, Maxwell Mouse or Mortimer Mouse? Mortimer Mouse. Mortimer Mouse is right. You've got another 10 points for that. You're 170, really? you're 120. Rory Michaela, what is it to be? Uh, H. 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 Right. No, you can gamble again. Harrison, George Harrison. George attended. Do you want to take the question or not? Mm. Yeah. No, you want to try and answer it. Rory, do you want to try and answer it? We've got to. Before yeah. we yeah. have yeah. fur around your dyes, do you want to have it's a try nice. and answer it? Yes. Right, you're going to go for it. Yes, we'll George go for it. attended senior school, the Liverpool Institute, with which other Beatle? Um, one of the other four Beatles, three Beatles left. Which one did he go to the Liverpool the Institute with? One the Come on, there's only three left. Today. Um, you answer it, because you're on. the pop person. John Lennon. No, it wasn't. It was Paul McCartney. I'm sorry, you've lost ten years. And uh, when we are fab, later on tonight on Night Network, all of George Harrison's video. And this is the last question for uh, Arthur and Joanna. What is it well, to Well, there's be? no point. Um, We're winning. What's the point in having well, the give last it to them. No, right. no, 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 we'll have the last question. G, 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 please. Do you want to take G or give it to them? G, no. All right, G, so you want to try and go for a big one. Five points. Geography. Do you want to go for a question on geography or part? Yeah, oh, yeah, geography, yeah. It's only worth five points. You can go if you like. No, no, no. Why don't we have half of it and pass half to them? Them. No, you give it to them. Right. <laughs> give them ten, see if they can catch up. Ten Holland, points. Which city subject. is the capital of Luxembourg? Oh. Holland. Luxembourg. Holland. No, Holland is not. Holland. <laughs> 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 They've lost another ten. They're down to 100. Our winners this week by 70 points are well Arthur Smith and Joanna Bright. Yes. <laughs> so, as you know, we all play for fun, and so we give a prize to every member of our panel, and it is a packet of Night Network pencils. Night Network. There we are. Yes, that's more from Night Net from Alphabets this week. There's far more to come on Night Network. On behalf of my lovely guests, me, thank you very much, and don't forget on Night Network, stay tuned because you have Ensign Radio from the North Sea, of course, weather permitting. Until next week, when Alphabets will be back. Bye. <laughs>
new Peugeot 405 takes your breath away. There's a pain reliever available with our prescription that has two pain-killing ingredients, paracetamol and codeine. It's called Solpadine, delivering relief in an effervescent formula to get to work fast. So now, when pain strikes, hit back with double action Solpadine. Effervescent and now in capsule form, Solpadine has the power to hit pain where it hurts. week at London's Hippodrome, the final of the UK DJ Disco Mix Championship takes place to find out who will go forward to represent the UK in the World Championships next month at the Royal Albert Hall. Now, among the contenders will be the Scratch Professor, who at the tender age of 14 is one of the youngest competitors ever to con be in the final. Take it away, Scratch. <laughs> Bye. 
Ash, you are 14 years old. That's the sort of age when most kids are just starting to get into things. How long have you been doing this stuff? Four years. You started at 10? Yeah. Now, are you one of these bedroom mixers or whatever they, they talk about? Yeah. And what is that exactly? This scratching in the room, bedroom. What, upstairs when mum and dad aren't around? Yeah. And what sort of material do you use? These, these two. Well, you can't, when you don't walk into a funky deck like this, age 12. I mean, what, what did you start using? Uh, one record player. One record this player. This a rubbish record player. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. It's got a lot technical since then, though. Yeah. Now, as I say, you are the scratch professor, and I hear you're about to be giving lessons to somebody. Is that true? Yeah. And how old are they? It, the boy is four. Four years old? Yeah, four. <laughs> They start them young nowadays, don't they? I mean, are there a lot of your mates who get, in, get into all this? Yeah. Yeah? Now, I notice the way you treat these records. I mean, these are filthy. Do you have to replace them quite often? No. You don't? You don't? No. Oh, bang goes the next question I was going to ask you. How you afford it? But, um... <laughs> Scratch, let's just bring in now. We've got last year's world champion, Chad J. How you doing, You're Chad? Right, Good man. to meet you, my friend. Yeah, safe. Now then, Chad, yeah, you know, one of those ones, all right, yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> you know, another LL Cool J. Just don't say most definitely to me, all right? Chad, I heard, that last, I heard that last year you earned somewhere in the region of £50,000. As a result... What? As a result of winning the <laughs> World Championship. I mean, how have you pulled together this sort of cash? What have you been doing? Uh, well, first off, I wish I'd have earned 50,000 grand, but... Uh, Near enough. I've been doing... I've just been doing, like, gigs all over the world, you know, because of winning this World Final. Mm -hmm. uh, places like... Finland, Norway, America, Australia, Tokyo, Hong Kong, wherever, all mm -hmm. over the place. It's just yeah. been like wild, crazy. And what about Scratch? You, have you got ambitions to travel around the world and do this sort of stuff? Yeah. Well, where, where, do you, where do you see it can end up? What are the possibilities for you? The world's your oyster still. I mean, we've seen like you know, C, 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 CJ yeah. McIntosh, you know, yeah, yeah. when we pump up the volume. So like. Club music's definitely hitting the charts. I mean, is yeah, this something that's here to stay? Definitely. I mean, this year is the year for British hip-hop and stuff like this, you know. Uh, I mean, people better watch out because there's loads of crews doing stuff at the moment. There's people like Scratch Professor here cutting things up and soon they're all going to be making records, you know. So the mm. British record industry better watch out, boy. Look out, all you. boys. So who are, the, who, are the big, who are the big names you like to mix them? Public Enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about our very own Derek B? Yeah, he's good. You into him? Yeah. What about yeah, you, Chad? Derek. Yeah, Derek's good, man. I know Derek quite well. He's a good guy. Yeah. I mean, the stuff he's doing at the moment. He's his down, new brother. LP. <laughs> yeah, he's down. He's down with it. He's down with it. <laughs> Scratch, at the age of 14, do you think that influences people to, like, mark, mark you up? You know, I mean, are, are you as good as, as, as the people, other people who can be, be contending who are, like, age 22 and stuff, or yeah. are they just giving you a bit of... No, I think I am. You're yeah. hot. Yeah? Yeah. Boy's hot, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, Chad, take it away for us. You're going to give us a bit more scratching now, OK? Yeah, I'll try my best, man. On your mask, get <laughs> set, go. <laughs> Continues to be fruitful. Good luck. Thanks, man. Got one of them. All right. Scratch. Good luck in the UK Disco Mix Championship Finals. Thanks. Two wholesome down brothers. And talking of wholesome down brothers, we've got a competition about Captain Scarlet now. Now, earlier when we mentioned that during Captain Scarlet, you will see three Night Network logos. Now, if you can tell us where the three Night Network logos are and write in, you win a whole host of Captain Scarlet goodies. So send your answer on the postcard, please, to us here at Night Network, in brackets, Scarlet. PO Box 90 London, SE1 9PR. Now then, whilst giving away competitions, I mean, setting competitions, we also give them away. There's two competitions from recent weeks we're going to give away now. First of all, it's the Robocop competition. Now, the question we asked was, 
what does the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz not have? And the answer, of course, was a heart. Now, to win all these robo goodies, which you'll be seeing now, and the two lucky winners were... Let me think. Stephen Semper of Basingstoke Hans and Tony Goodwin of Coggershall in Essex. Well done, Jacket Record and Book on their way to you. Second competition was Sabutio and Tom Watt set the question, well, who won the most derbies between Spurs and Arsenal? Well, as it was Tom Watt, the answer has to be, of course, Arsenal. And our five lucky winners of these Sabutio sets are Aidan Bennett from Dorking in Surrey, Ben Ellis from Ventnor Isle of Wight, Tyrone Ebo London, Emma Haynes Haverhill, Adam Henry's dad from Wimborne. Well done. What a flicker, as my mate Malcolm would say. All right, coming up very shortly, it's Tim Westwood with Ensign, Ensign Radio, plus a video by George Harrison after the break, and live in LA with Ellen DeGeneres. OK, Len, let's go. Dreams are like angels They keep bad at bay, bad at bay Love is the light Scaring darkness away yeah. I'm so in love with you Purge the soul Make love your goal The power of love Together, you're safer with your ex. It says, on selected Club 1830 holidays, you can go away for two weeks, but only pay for one week. That's a shame. Why? I can only spare a week. Save up to £90 with Club 1830's new lower prices. The Ensign Rap Show with me, Westwood, in full effectiveness. Doing the do at the Gangster Boogie, taking no shorts, because that's the way we're living. And in tonight's show, we've got music by Eric B., the Uptown Crew, Houdini, Salt and Pepper, and Whistle. Plus the gig guide and the start of a dope beat competition. So keep it locked tonight, Network, for the next 30 minutes, for the beats and rhymes and bass line of rap and roll. No right turns, no left turns, just straight ahead. Getting the jam underway, LL Cool J, cranking it to the T.O.P., going back to Calais. Spoken like a trooper, like a trooper should. LL Cool J, DJ Bobcat and DJ Cut Creator. Produced by Rick Rubin on the Def Jam label. And now it's competition time on Ensign Radio. We're giving away 25 copies of Going Back to Cali and 25 copies of The Overweighter by Heavy D and the Boys. Simply name two records by LL Cool J. Answers to me, Westwood, Ensign Radio, uh, Care of Night Network, PO Box 90, London SE1, 9PR. And it's about that time to pump up the volume. Check this. Eric B and Rakim paid in full. Dance floor justice with the sound of the drum and the bass. Eric B and Rakim paid in full. Remixed by my homies Matt Black and Jonathan Moore. Now, just some quick gig guide news. Check out the Leap Years Day dance party with Pete Tong, Chris Forbes, Alex George and me, Westwood. That's the 29th of February at the Astoria Theatre in the heart of the West End. And that's going to be a ram jam roadblock. Next, out of money earning Mount Vernon, here's Heavy D, Jock the Jettle and Marley Marl. Armed and dangerous, taking no prisoners, releasing ho hostages. At the Gangster Boogie, Uptown kicking it. Grab a hold of yourself and check this tempo. Remember these rhymes? Why? Heavy D said so. The overweight prince with an act to swing. Give him time and a rhyme. And I will barbecue things. My rhyme was built with skill for this section. The call it whack when it's under my protection. When I get busy on the mic, no delaying. No slicker, no quicker on the rise that I'm saying. Like an opportunist when I see it, I grab it. I keep a party jumping like a quick body rabbit. I got the kind of voice to make you jump for joy. My name is Heavy D. And we are the boys. A book ain't a book if it 
wedding has no title. A wedding ain't a wedding if there's no recital. A fight ain't a fight if it's a hit and miss and a chain. Ain't a jail without finesse and sequence. The fuck you fresh all we Most professionally, and we take no prints. So stay your plane. A whole girl sequence to keep a steady pace. Look at the nip again. We gotta win this race. Go, Elvis. Go, go, go. Uptown, uptown. Uptown, uptown. Uptown, get it. Talk, talk. Just to stop the match. And my fuse was ignited to a bomb that's advanced with a style that's enlightened. Now I'm coolin', schoolin', toolin', ruling. My performance left the audience drooling. I'm dropping aggravation with a rhyming word creation. On the mic when I rock, I use death lyrication. To stand at attention, keep my body at ease. Severely wounded, weak rocking them seas. You see my rhymes accumulate, so great they pile. Defeating weak rappers, execution in style. Excuse me, my friend, he must cut in. Woody Rock says, peace, Molly Mar, please spin. I'm ready to break a lyrical legacy. I must dominate. Your thought is all wrong, cause my image is strong. I can never be weak on an uptown song. My tongue I take it late, my voice gets higher. My lungs vibrate, my throat is on fire. I'll execute, break all to die loose. Ignite on the mic and make it all recoup. The brother black will write it, Rosie will recite it. And when I'm through, you'll all wanna write it. The streets I walk on, you'll soon be licking it. Well, I don't give a damn, cause uptown is kicking it. Cause I'm the quest for this and the homeboys will be Every day I'm all in my door, fuck it French LT Y'all want to see through, bitch, yeah Y'all want to see through, bitch, yeah We're gonna chill Cause where we're headed now, up, never, never down Where we're headed now, up, never, never down Yeah, 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 yeah. Now don't get funny, baby, don't get ill Just groove to the beat And let's all chill Nah, 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 nah We're going to town to town 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 Nah, 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 nah We're going to town to town 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 Nah, 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 nah Uptown kicking it, the Uptown crew now signed to MCA. And a big shout across town to my home brother CJ Carlos. And word out to the Kane Cool Out crew. That's MC Westrock, Mac, Turk, Prince, Sharp, Foster, Styx and Slim. Plus a shout to the Salisbury Prosse from Robbie Royal at Portsmouth. Hold tight for part two with some dub plate pressure from Houdini and some rap revival from Whistle. Ensign Radio on Night Network with me, Westwood, armed and dangerous, taking no prisoners. Keep it locked. <laughs> Wilson, carpenter. Stuart Blackman, biochemist. Terry Smythe, telephone engineer. They're in the Territorial Army in their spare time. A third of Britain's land forces trained to fight alongside the regulars. And we're looking for more recruits. Make a free call on 0800 treble 5 treble 5 now. We're ready and waiting to talk to you. Before you check out a motor, check out Exchange and Bart. With so many cars, prices and information, you'll really wise up. Exchange and Bart. It gives you more clout. 
For beautiful hair, enhanced with body and shine, you need a conditioner that responds to your individual needs. Silkian self-adjusting conditioner acts only where needed. What's not needed rinses clean away. Silkian's conditioner and shampoo. For beautiful hair, turn to Silkian's. Hall's special vapor action unblocks your nose, soothes your throat, helps you through your day. Hall's mentholiptus, vapor action for your nose and throat. Friday night, Saturday morning, part two of the Ensign Rap Show with me, Westwood. Cranking it to the T.O.P. as the countdown continues with the cold rock stuff. Next, some dub plate pressure from Houdini. That's Jalil and Ecstasy on the M.I.C., Grandmaster G on the D.E.X. Produced by Larry Smith and mixed by Chuck New. Recorded up at Battery Studios in Wilson on the northwest side. Remember where you saw it first. Night Network in full E-F-F-E-C-T. Rock you again and again in the next couple of weeks. Rock you again and again. Houdini from Gunsmoke getting goddamn busy. And the sad news on the street is that the Houdini tour has now been cancelled as Cool Mo D is in the recording studio. But check out the Cold Chilling tour with Roxanne Shante, Bismarcky, Big Daddy Kane and MC Shan. And that's at the Brixton Academy at Easter. And that's going to be smoking, kicking, firing, biting and stinging. Know what I'm saying. Back to the break and beats of rap and roll. The most fly, salt and pepper and a cup called Tramp. Biggest selling rap record in New York City last year. Salt and Pepper and DJ Spinderella with Tramp. And in a couple of weeks' time, we'll be busting their new video of I'm Down. Just some quick dedications, sending out a shout to Mossy Moel and a mention to the Devastation crew. That's uh, D Jam, MC Easy R, Devious D, and DJ Death Vader in Norfolk. And word out to the Ingram High School posse. Next, some rap revival pressure from Whistle. Taking no shorts, just bugging. <laughs> And this is true, we love to do the things that we're not supposed to do. We don't need robbing, stealing, or mugging. In fact, don't take it seriously, we're only bugging. <laughs> If you don't believe that, then forget you all Cause we're gonna party hardy and have a ball Cause we're here to prove who bugged out means That things aren't always what they seem We want you all to scream and start to shout As we go on a mission and bug on out <laughs> And this is true, we love to do the things that we're not supposed to do We don't mean robbing, stealing, or mugging In fact, don't take it seriously, we're only bugging Well, it's all about us, Jazzy KD But sometimes it's all about just me You know what I notice all of a sudden When I speak people this ear button There's not another person who sounds like me Indubitably, there will never be I say a tongue twister like the blink of an eye Say it so well, you would think it's a lie Like Peter Parker picked up his gold pen Put it on the back of his that pursued his friend His plot deployed, up a unit punk Persisted to prohibit, so the plot is planned flunk <laughs> Just to talk to you, for you to be my girl and I'll be your man You'd be mine, not just another fan You'd be with me everywhere I go You'd hold my hand at every show Inseparable is what we'd be Jazz and jazz and eternally But after all of this, you know the dream would end I wouldn't talk to you, I'd talk to your friend And you would call me conceited and you'd call me wrong But you'd call me that night and try to turn me on but you'd Down my digits in the day or late at night Promise and swear that you do me right But I doubt that anything that you do Would ever give me the stomach to talk to you This 
is true. Whistle, just bug in. And remember the dope beat competition named Two Cuts by LL Cool J. Answers to Ensign Radio, Care of Night Network, PO Box 90, London SE1 9PR. And don't forget your requests and dedication. Once again, that's Ensign Radio, Care of Night Network, PO Box 90, London SE1 9PR. We're back in seven days' time with a brand new Cool Mo D and Eric B. That's all from me, Westwood, distressing the session to the TOP. I'm out of here. Peace. Peugeot 405 takes your breath away. More cocoa, sir? Iceberg! Stop all engines. Gun. 30 degrees starboard. Be glad you had an extra strong mint. Hi there, I'd like to introduce more ways to eat your Cadbury's cream eggs. Here's Lone Ranger on silver. Whoa, -ho -ho, take it steady, Nitty. On Tom Tums, Abraham Lincoln. Wham, bam, thank you, Abraham. Julius Caesar on saxophone. He's a taste bud, please, of that. Caesar Caesar. Bonnie Prince Charlie doing the yokey cokey. Off of its bottle jock, Cadbury's Cream Eggs. How do you eat yours? on hallowed ground here at the improv if you come here and you make it here and you can kind of work the crowd here are you on your way as a comedian um it certainly helps i mean this is a great place it's it's not like working any other comedy club in uh, uh dallas texas or somewhere else that which is a nice club you know they have improvs everywhere now they're nice clubs but it, when you're here in hollywood you have no idea who's sitting in the audience it, you know it, it could be you know uh, like, for instance, you know, the, uh, the time that the guy from The Tonight Show saw me and booked me. I mean, you have no idea who's in the audience. There's there, there constantly are comedians that everybody hangs out here. It's a very prestigious place to see, you know, people and be seen, which I don't really go in for all that. I mean, I, I think, uh, although a lot of people will drive by my house or something just to, you know, take a look at where I live. I don't know if I'm on the tour, the tour yet. You know, sometimes they'll go... Because it's not really, it's on the way to Beverly Hills. They'll like pass and, and, and point and they'll go, uh, that street right, Ellen DeGeneres lives right down that street in that apartment complex. Uh, it's, it's not on the tour. I mean, they don't sell it on the streets yet, but it, I think it's going to be. Anyway, what are we talking about? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a great, it's a great place for your career to start, um, but it, it's not the end. I mean, there are so many different steps. You, you think... Oh, this will be it. This is this is the one that's going to do it for me. And it's just like climbing a mountain. You think that's the peak, and then you get there and you go, oh, there's another one. You know, and you just keep going, and you finally jump off the mountain. It's my analogy. That's life in a nutshell. <laughs> one big mountain that you climb, and then you jump off. There's really nowhere to go. You just stand there with a bunch of billy goats looking around, going, this is really miserable, isn't it? And they go, 
think that's... Does that the kind of noise that they make? Uh, yes, I think even English billy goats make noises like that, actually. Okay. I've never even made a billy goat noise before. <laughs> For you, <laughs> I made it. Thank you very much. That's very nice of you. You're well. welcome. Now, you're not so native, are you? I mean, you've come in from somewhere else. So where are you from I'm originally? I'm not a native. You can tell by the way I've dressed. Yes, because indeed. Because they wear those loincloths and uh, spears. <laughs> I hate that. Uh, I'm from... You know, my voice sounds a monotone right now, doesn't it? I'm going to try to change it every once in a while, just because you're falling asleep at home right now, going... She's, you know, fascinating to listen to, but the tone of her voice is just so monotone. Um... <laughs> So the billy goats, are we past that now? <laughs> yes, we're yeah, well past that. The native <laughs> thing, that's right. Hey, even the crew's falling asleep. Wait a minute, there's more. The billy goat thing is, there's a whole lot more that I'm going to talk about. Um, I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. You know where that is? Uh, no, tell me. Home of uh, Dixieland jazz, and uh, it's a great place to, to be from. It's a place to be from. You don't want to stay. It's a good place to say, oh, New Orleans, that's a great place to be from. Everyone says that, um, but then you just get out of there because there's lots of drinking going on. That's, that's a horrible place to start out comedy because everybody's drunk the whole time. So you really don't know if they're laughing or throwing up. There's that throwing up thing again. And I don't even say that that much. I don't think, and this year alone I've said, this is the most upset of the entire year. So don't even keep that question in, edit that out too. It's just gonna be like a 30 second interview, just the billy goat stuff. That's gonna be the only thing left in. <laughs> I don't know why she's popular in the United States. Hey, they're falling asleep again. <laughs> what about your childhood? Did you have a tough childhood? Tough childhood? Oh. You kidding? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I think it was... Um, my parents were pretty, pretty cruel to me. I, uh, I remember one day I was coming home from kindergarten. Well, they told me it was kindergarten. I found out later I'd been working in a factory for two years. Um, <laughs> they were tough. They were really, I remember that. Uh, I, I was a, a kid, I was about four or five years old. My dad walks up to me before Christmas one day and he says, Ellen, that's what he called me, Ellen, you know, <laughs> that was my name and he, he'd always call me that. But anyway, he said, Ellen, uh, what would you like for Christmas? And I said, I'd like a little dolly. And Christmas day, he wheels in this tremendous metal thing. I said, no, that's not what I meant. And you ever try to dress one of those things? <laughs> well, they're impossible. We had fire drills around the house that in case of a fire, we each had a special duty. This was horrible. My, um, so we all had duties, like my mother had to grab the, um, the jewelry, my brother grabbed the pets, my father ran out to get help. They told me to try to save the washer and dryer. And oh, it's a good thing I had that dolly, I'll tell you, because that, those are heavy. Have you tried to move those? Yes. <laughs> I guess they were cruel, I don't know. It was a good childhood, though, when I think back, actually, all in all. Tell me where your first professional engagement was. Um, well, professional, I really don't know. That's a term that <laughs> we're going to have to use loosely here. I think it was New Orleans. When I started out, just two weeks after I got started, a comedy club opened up, which I had never been into a comedy club. I'd never really followed it. I'd, I'd watch comedians on television, but I really didn't think that's what I wanted to do. The club opened up. I, um, I auditioned for a job as an MC uh, seven nights a week. And, you know, you're just so happy to work. You're just, I mean, I look back and I see how many comedians there are now and how hard it is to get a job that I was really lucky to work seven nights a week at something. It was, it was school to get paid for that also. Not really well, but I got paid. And um, so I'd work, uh, they had three shows on Saturday night, and the third show was advertised as the X-rated show. And this was in the French Quarter in New Orleans. People would be coming in with, I mean, they would be drunk out of their minds at one in the morning, and it's, you know, they think they're coming to see an X-rated show, and all these comedians who are doing filthy, dirty material. I'm the MC, and I walk up and I do like everything I do is clean. I completely clean material. Oh, it was, it was horrible, and I didn't want to work that show. I, I begged the owner to to let me just out of that one show, and he said, No, you have to learn how to work dirty. You have to work dirty, and um, so. Uh, it was it was that was a horrible experience because you know I, I and I just kept it clean. They kept telling me to to try to, to just throw in some curse words every once in a while and, and just just pull your shirt off just once just you know. And so I said you know, all right, but no, I didn't do that. I didn't I I, I didn't at all because my father used to come see me. My father was always worried about you know that kind of environment for his daughter to be in. So we had him knocked off, but. Um, <laughs> 
That was always clean anyway, but that's how I am off stage, so there's really no need for me to be dirty on stage. I, uh, well, when I first moved here, Bud Friedman saw me and, and got me onto the improv right away. So that was a very lucky thing, because then from there I got great spots and I started, I, I did The Tonight Show. The guy from The Tonight Show saw me. I started doing The Tonight Show. Um, I did a, a movie recently that's going to be out in February. Um, I got a deal with Larimar Studios that uh, they're developing a television show right now that CBS has the option to to do it. I don't know, you know, see those things, they take so long. I have no idea if it's going to get on the air or not, but it's, I mean, it's a step, you know, it's, at least I have this thing and I know people are interested and they're working on it, but it's such a long process. I, I have a bunch of other things going on. I'm having meetings constantly with people that are trying to find movies and projects for me to do because you can't just hang on one thing. There's there's no way that, you know, there's no guarantees. It's weird because I'm, this is such a, a, a business you have to be so patient in, and I'm such an impatient person, and, you know, you go out and, you, th you know, you do well on an audition, and you go home, and, you know, they say, you know, we'll let you know, you know, real soon. Real soon to them could mean, you know, 1993, you know, and you're just, you know, you're like 50 years old now, and they, oh, no, the, the part called for an 18-year-old. Oh, yeah, well, I was 18 when I auditioned, okay? Well... <laughs> Well, you had it, sorry. Maybe we should have called you sooner then. <laughs> but anyway, it's a, it's a weird business, but it's a fun business. I'd rather be doing this than selling vacuum cleaners. I sold vacuum cleaners for a while. Boy, did that job suck. I really did sell, I did, I sold vacuum cleaners, and that was the first time I started doing material because, I mean, I didn't mean to, but I was trying to sell vacuum cleaners to this, this old woman. The, the more expensive the vacuum cleaner, the more commission you made. And I don't know how, if they have vacuum cleaners in, in England like this. I'm sure they do. They have lights on the front of vacuum cleaners. And, I, and it was like $150 more for the ones with the lights on the front. She said, now why should I spend $150 more? What is the light for? What's the purpose? And I said, that's so that you can vacuum at night uh, and not wake up people by turning the lights on. And she believed me. And she bought the vacuum cleaner. There's a pain reliever available without prescription that has two pain-killing ingredients, paracetamol and codeine. It's called Solpidine, delivering relief in an effervescent formula to get to work fast. So now, when pain strikes, hit back with double-action Solpidine. Effervescent and now in capsule form, Solpidine has the power to hit pain where it hurts. You may not have traveled very far, everything seems fine, but already you may be subject to driver fatigue. It's particularly dangerous because it creeps up on you unawares. You may have experienced drowsiness like this several times already. So far you've been lucky, but the next time you feel the slightest suggestion of it, open your window. Stop at a suitable place. Get out, walk around, drink a cup of coffee. Give yourself at least 15 minutes before you start driving again. Driver fatigue, it could put you to sleep for good. You obviously lead a very, very busy life. I mean, it's all hectic, running from meetings and all this kind of thing. How do you manage to stay slim and fit? Um, I don't know. Well, I, I am pretty much into the fitness thing. My whole family, I think, is a big inspiration. I, my grandmother, uh, she's amazing. She started walking five miles a day when she was 60. She's 97 today. We don't know where the hell she is. Yeah. Um, I, myself, I'm pretty, uh, I'm flossing every day. Because that gum disease is scary, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how many of you know, my, uh, my aunt died from gum disease. 
She did. She accidentally got two pieces of Wrigley spearmint stuck on her eyelids, couldn't open them up. She wandered onto some train tracks. A train didn't hit her, but she stepped on a rusty nail, infected her foot. Doctors had to cut it off. She got real depressed about that, moved to Guam, opened up a little gift boutique there selling knickknacks, went bankrupt in about six months. Anyway, she fell in love with this man she met while hitchhiking. And I guess he loved her too, I don't really know, but he used to make fun of her missing foot all the time. She shot him. She's so sensitive about that missing foot. Turns out that he was married. His wife found her and beat the hell out of her. Then they got to talking and got to be real close friends and enjoy doing things together every Saturday. And one of their favorite things they enjoyed doing on Saturdays was to go swimming over in Caldwin's Pond in Hazelfield Park. It's in Guam. And they were swimming one Saturday, Trudy and Yolanda, that was them. It was real choppy, real windy, a storm was brewing. And Trudy called out, better go, storms are brewing. She was helpful like that. And Yolanda said, yeah. So they got out and started walking, and a pack of wild wolves attacked Aunt Yolanda and killed her. So that gum disease is nothing to mess around with. You, know, you have to stay in shape. You know, so I, that's what I, you know, I'll floss or something like that. Now, what, one thing that I'd quite like to know, because there's not a lot of female comedians around, because it's considered to be a tough business. I mean, have you found it particularly tough? Well, when I was a man, I think it was a lot easier. And uh, since the operation, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, you see, I'm asked that question all the time. Mm -hmm. Is it tough to be a female mm -hmm. comedian? I don't, I think it is. I think it's, it's, you know, I think it's more of a man's world, you know, in this business, in a, in, a, in a lot of businesses. And that's got, you know, I'm not saying that's good or bad. If I was saying, I would say it's bad, but I'm not saying it's good or bad. Um, I think that, you know, that it, men are accepted a little easier um, because I don't know if it's this psychological thing that it's a bar and there's drinking and you should be watching because I'm not a singer, I'm a comedian. And, and to have, uh, I think when you're a comedian, you have this certain amount of control. You're, you're controlling however large the audience is, whether it's 300 or 3,000 people. And to have that much power and that much control and yet keep some kind of softness and some kind of femininity, you know, so it's, it's a real difficult blend, I think, without coming across um, harsh or, you know, offend, either offending women, if you're too pretty and you're dressed, you know, you know too sexy, or offending men because you're too rough and you're too, they don't like that a woman could have that much control. So there's so, I mean, but then you start breaking it down and it's just, it's not funny anymore. So I don't really try to think about that, but I'm aware of it. I know when I walk on stage, people judge more what, what a woman is wearing than what a man has on. I mean, you can, you can talk to people and they would have no idea what a guy right before you had on, but they'll notice, you know, that did you see the shoes she had on or did you, I mean, like that really doesn't matter, but yet, and if you read in, in uh, you know, you, any kind of interview, you always, you know, read that, you know, she's starting to gray or she's starting to show lines around. They don't say that about men. It's more focused on, so women, our appearance, I think, is more important. But as far as being um, a hindrance to, you know, I think I've been lucky because I stand out a little more because I'm clean and because I'm not a female comedian. I'm just a comedian who happens to be female. And I think that's, you know, that's real important. So, <clears throat> I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm not complaining about, you know, uh, female comedians have it, you know, tougher. Being in showbiz, you're on the road a lot of the time, and I just wondered whether, uh, because of this existence, you had time to have any pets or anything like that. Um, no, I, I would like to have pets. I used to have pets mm. when I was uh, one. I don't remember them that well. Uh, I have, uh, ra well, I, I, my neighbor, you know, has a dog, and I really, I don't understand dogs that much at all. Because, well, first of all, because I try to run. Not, not only do I floss. You'd think that would be enough. But I run. And whenever I run, dogs are always, like, chasing after me, which really, it, that bothers me because they immediately, they see you running, they come after you, and a cat doesn't do that. A cat will see you, you know, and immediately run in the opposite direction, thinking she's running from a dog. Let's go. You know, and they get out of the way. And uh, that's why I think cats are smarter that way. Um, my neighbor has this dog, and I don't know what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a big, big muscular dog that... It, it breathes constantly and drools and jumps on me and I like that. <laughs> you know, I'm going to get one. But the little ones, I hate these little, the little chihuahuas, little bug-eyed rat dogs. It's, it's always the little dogs you see wearing sweaters. You, know, you never see a big dog wearing a sweater. My neighbor's dog has a sweater, but he wears it just wrapped around his shoulders. And he looks good lately. He looks really nice. But now go, I have two goldfish. That's what I got. Cause 
you know, they're easier because I'm on the road a lot. They, they die still because I'm not there to feed them, but they're so much cheaper to just buy new ones. You know, a dog, on the other hand, would, you know. Um, I initially got the fish. I got them because, you know, if you, if you watch fish, it helps you to relax, to fall asleep. And which explains why I always doze off while I'm snorkeling. After you've done a show, what do you actually do to relax? Um, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't, after the show, I'm so hyper. It takes me so long to fall asleep. I, I'm always thinking. That's, that's my problem. I'm constantly thinking about things. Uh, during the day, I like to walk a lot. I take, I take long walks when I'm on the road. I try to find areas. Um, like I was in, uh, in Colorado recently, and I was walking around in the, in the foothills. I wasn't even high in the mountains. And I'm right down the hill from where I'm standing. There was a little family of deer. And uh, just 10 feet away from me, and I thought, oh, you know, there's a mother, a father, two little baby deer. I thought, I wish I had a gun, you know, just right there. Could have gotten all of them. But uh, I'm kidding. I like deer. I see, I just, I like to walk around. I, I find, uh, like, I'm walking around uh, one day, and I found some petrified wood. And I picked it up, and I thought to myself, what could have scared these trees so badly, you know? Maybe a dinosaur lifting his leg. I don't know. It must have been scary for a tree. But... I always, you see, that's what I do. I, I think about things. I walk around. I don't understand. Because to me, life is a very precious thing. We're here for such a short time. Everything should make sense, should have a reason. And I don't, I don't understand why we have fleas here. Fleas do nothing at all beneficial. You know, I, I thought at times like this when we can't figure it out for ourselves, wouldn't it be great if we could just pick up the phone and call up God and ask him these things? You, know, you just pick up the phone and call up God and... Hi, God, it's Ellen. Ellen, degenerous. Degenerous. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. No, I never thought of that. It does sound like that, doesn't it? I get it. Yeah. Listen, if you weren't too busy, it... sure, I'll hold on. Somebody's at the gate. Onward, Christian soldiers, march. Yeah. Now, just sing along your tape. That's it. It's not a tape. Well, they're good. <laughs> yeah. Listen, God, there's certain things on this earth I just don't understand why they're here. You know, not Charo. No. <laughs> That's not what I meant. I mean, I see what you mean, but there's certain things. I mean, Jesus Christ. No, no. I didn't mean that. That was great. Yeah, we're still talking about that. <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, I have a little plastic statue of them on my dashboard in my car. No, I'm not Mexican. It's just on there. I was thinking more about insects. See, you know, bees are great. The honey. That was clever. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking more about fleas. They seem to have no beneficial reason to... Yeah. No, I didn't realize how many people were employed by the flea collar industry. Mm. Not to mention sprays. Well, <laughs> I guess you're... No, of course you're right. Of course you are. <laughs> Yeah, being who you are. Yeah. Oh, you got a little cold. God bless you. Or bless yourself. <laughs> bless yourself. Yeah. Still doing that comedy. Uh-huh. You got a joke for me. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, no, I got time. Of course, you know that more than me, huh? <laughs> that was a joke. Go ahead. Who's there? God who? Godzilla. Oh, incredibly funny. Uh-huh. Another one, sure. Who's there? God who? Got a dime. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I don't have time for another one. No, no, no. I just remembered an appointment I have to get to, so I gotta go. Yeah. How about that? God who? Gotta go. Cute. Stupid. All righty. Yeah. It was good talking to you, too. And I'll see I'll talk to you later. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye if you could call him. Last winter, this house acquired a waterbed, a stream for the ducks, and a shower in the kitchen. You can help prevent frost damage by insulating, lagging pipes, and finding out where to turn off. Phone a plumber, but do it now before the frost brings you a lovely indoor pool.
grab us if I haven't got enough to do. Are these blooming doors to cope with? Like getting to a trip point Charlie around these corridors. You want a wedge of open, Ada? Hang a bit. I've got one here, haven't I? There you go. Oh, Terry, you are a good boy. That's better. I'll remember you in my will. Ta-ta. The old Ada's cracking on about them fire doors again. They ought to leave them open all the time. It's stupid, isn't it? You coming in? If there should be a fire where you work, the quickest way to make it spread is to wedge open a fire door. Fire doors prevent fire spreading, and they're a barrier against suffocating fumes and smoke, giving you enough time to escape to safety. Never wedge open a fire door, never lock them shut. Fire doors can save lives. Yours may be.
strange, but harmless. suppose any of this could mean anything Well, I'm under no pressure from, uh, say, the record company to do anything, you know. They... Play it, Batman. Not a very funny joke, I'd say. I'm an alien. I'm a legal alien. I'm an Englishman in New York. I'm a gnu, I'm a gnu, the nicest work of nature in the zoo. I'm a gnu, how do you do? You really ought to know who's who. I'm a gnu, a another gnu. I wish I could ganache my teeth at you. I'm a gnu, how do you do? You really ought to canoe wahoos wahoo. I'm a gnu, spelt G-N-U. Call me bison or a copy and I'll sue. Gnor am I in the least like that dreadful hearty beast. Oh, gnu, 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 I'm a gnu. Gnu, 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 I'm a gnu. Gnu, 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 I'm a gnu.
Let's have a look at that tooth. I have actually um, set up a limited company recently. It's a company that um, I hope will change, you know, sort of the economic way in which I do things. Yeah. Because as <clears throat> some of you know, one of you I think knows, I have lived my life till now on the basis that I earn a lot of money right. and I give away a lot of money. But actually setting up a limited company has, to my mind anyway, changed my own status in society because I'm now director of a limited company, which is different from being simply an individual. Mm. How do you feel about that, though? Changing mm, your mixed role? Mixed feelings. I mean, in some ways, you know, you feel, is it good to have, within quotes, gone up in the world? Right. Right? On the other hand, you feel, do I want to go up in the world in that sort of way? I'm not sure. But I suppose what I'm trying to do is build on this sort of Robin Hood existence of mine, where I, well, not Robin Hood in the sense of robbing people, but Robin Hood in the sense of having made money, by selling my services at, at a sort of normal commercial cost, right. you then give away the excess that you have, which you, which you don't want to keep. And what are you thinking of giving that money away to? What particularly? Well, there are one or two projects, especially in India, which I think have a, you know, a profound understanding of what is wrong with the Indian system and what is wrong with the international system. And mm. it's being given directly to those mm. groups. Vishal, I don't think you were here when Vishal came on the program. Vishal Mangalwadi is, you know, somebody whom I know from old school days in India, well, college days in India. And he set up this relief right. and reconstruction, rehabilitation uh, program, and money's going to him. But we were sort of talking about this last night, weren't we, in, in, in connection with giving to Ethiopia, because um, we were saying that the famine there has got worse, even though there's well, been all this aid that's been going out financially. Yes. And, um, I mean, I must admit that although I think... What you're trying to do sounds very noble, um, uh, you know, earn a lot of money and then give it away. The thing is that I think we always think, oh, I can help someone by giving them money. Right. And <laughs> I don't think that, that help is, is far-reaching enough. I don't think it is just a case of giving money. I mean, obviously, we, we need more money. All of us need more money um, uh, to be able to give away. These countries need more money. But it seems that part of the problem is that, that because of the systems of government in those countries, such as Ethiopia, the money isn't exactly getting to the people straight away yeah. anyway. There's all sorts of other right. things happening. But you see, that's, that's the bit that worries me the most, in fact, that almost by giving relief uh, projects such as Comic Relief or Live Aid and Sport Aid, you know, this encourages people to give and everyone feels tremendously good about it, but if anything, that satisfies people co people's consciences and they feel, well, I've given a bit and that's, that's good, right. I can stop there and I don't really have to get involved. And it's the getting involved with something which in the, and acting together yeah. as a group, not as an individual just shoving money at the problem, that really helps in the long run. I mean, taking it at the simplest level, for example, I mean, I live in London, and I can't go anywhere, if I'm going to travel on the underground, I can't go anywhere per day without meeting at least one or two people who are going to ask me for money. Or well, more than that, I should think. Yes. yes. And uh, um, it's quite hard sometimes because I feel quite callous walking by all these people, right. you know, who, who are down and out and haven't got anything to live on and saying, oh, can I have a few pennies for a cup of tea? And you feel so bad about not giving them that. But sometimes it's actually easier to solve your con you know, to make your conscience feel right. good by just flinging them 50p. When in fact you know that probably that money isn't going to go to help them anyway, that that 50p would just be put towards the next bottle of cider or or beer or whatever uh, or something much stronger than that, which they're going to get drunk on. Yeah, and almost that if you walk past a beggar or somebody lying in the underground, then you can put 50p down and you feel you've again you've solved your conscience, but you don't have to relate to the person as an individual. You don't have to relate to them as a human being. You don't you don't have to help them take them and go for a cup of tea with them. You don't have to treat them as a human being. You've just, it's an object that you mm. can throw 50p at. So That's what do right. you do then, Jane? Well, I've, I have done it myself once or twice. I haven't done it very often, but I, I've, I've heard of friends who've suggested that what, what would be a more helpful thing to do is if someone asks you for money you, and they say they want it for a cup of tea or um, something to eat, you actually d go with them. You say, right, um, I won't give you the money, mm. but there's a McDonald's over there or whatever. 
and you go with them to that <laughs> and buy them um, a cup of coffee and, and, and a hamburger. Mm. Mm. But the point is that takes time yes. and it takes commitment. And, and often that's the very thing that all of, you know, whether we're talking about London, whether we're talking about Ethiopia, what is needed is time and commitment and basically, I suppose, love, that, that involvement with another human being, which we don't have time for. Yeah, sadly, that's, that's it, that most people really haven't got time for that or don't want because it challenges their own, their own lifestyle too much, yeah. is to get involved and relate it personally to themselves. That's right. So, actually, what I'm saying is that in the long run, it is easier to give money. I mean, you know, obviously, <laughs> not everyone has money to give away, but that just by giving a, a pound or something to a relief organisation, might make you feel better, but isn't really in the long run. Going no, to I do wasn't. Much I help. wasn't talking about giving a pound or ten. Well, I know you. I, I mean, I, I work on the basis of Jesus' principle that um, the widow who gave away, you know, the odd penny she had, was actually giving away far more than the rich man standing next to her who'd given her who'd given objectively very much more money. So Jesus' measure of giving seems to be not what you give, but what you have left over after you've given away whatever you have. Mm. And that's that's the real measure by which you can measure your own giving, or indeed anyone else's giving. Yours first, <laughs> then anyone else's. No, no. But uh, yes, I agree. It's not enough to give money. Having given money, you must then get involved to change the you know the, the structures of society, right. and create the poverty, and create the pressures mm. and so on, and the problems that are there mm. in the world. Right. Yeah. But I think also, I mean, Jesus wasn't just talking about giving money. I mean, he was talking about giving. Yes, and giving, giving yourself. Giving yourself. Yes.